I'm situated on the scooter on the seat. Uh, I think it's May 3rd today. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, <laughs> my dates are off again. I do need to check. Uh, this uh, date thing occurs on a regular basis. And it's because of the way I sleep. When I go to sleep, as I move into the other realm, it's not necessarily the next day. And when I get up and transition from one work desk to the other, from one study desk to the other, once again, it's not necessarily the next day. Yet, the, te the tendency is to phrase things as when you get up as the next day. And also your thoughts are on that line as well. Oh, I did that a day ago. When was that? When, when I last got up. Right? The, the segment before. And the segment before is not necessarily the next day. And this is what causes a large chunk of the confusion. My next day, my next day, my next waking period is not necessarily the same thing. But this is the, this is the nature of research, the type of research I'm doing with the exploration. Where you really don't have any idea how you go, how, where you're going in terms of research, and you cut, you, you take it as it comes. That's not necessarily, you know, you know, I'm setting out on a purposeful direction as to what I'm doing. I'm not. I allow the situation that I'm in, the observation, to dictate what I am doing. So that determines the direction. I do not anticipate, I do not predict. There is no hypothesis. And at the end of the day, there is no conclusion. It's simply the observation. And the collected observation, the observation, the observation summed over a period of fragments of observation. Right? Depends on how much information you pick up, right? There is the, in, there is the observation of the individual uh, event that you pick up, your notes, but then there's the summation, there's the, the accumulative effect over a period of observations uh, that needs to be taken into account too as well. This is sort of what builds your knowledge within the structure, within the fundamentals of calculus. So the library, library science, the way, the way I'm doing it, sits well within the structures of uh, the fundamentals of calculus. Because it is fractional knowledge summed over a period of time, or a period of observational, because you can make more than one observation 
uh, let's see, let's see, over five hours, right? That's a lot of oxygenation. But if you do those five, those five hours that, that you consider to be observations, plural because you make more than one, if you do that for a month, now you have a, another set of uh, observations that you can sum over as well in terms of the focus of the data set. Now data is not necessarily digital information. It's not something that can be done in terms of raw calculations. It presents a different manner, a different function. That to a certain degree is a little more complex because you have to think of how this turns into a calculation but in terms of the, the data algorithm, in terms of your data science uh, does not necessarily meet up with the known or predictable equations. In other words, you really can't fit the data to a particular curve. You have to accept the data for what it is. That's, that's a difficult thing. This, this, this is sort of the, the, the secondary point, the, the, the corollary uh, to uh, the discussion we had last night on the way back, which I thought I had lost because there was an issue with the camera and how the camera records things. But as I went back and reviewed things, the, uh, the ride was there. So our discussions continue along as we ride. There's a construction site to the left of me, so that's making a, a fair bit of noise. that guy was going to go up, so I lit up on the accelerator. Yeah, I have to watch a lot on the road. Uh, so back to the question of data and how the data is observed and how it translates into a particular equation. And that's the thing in this case here. Not all the data can be fit in an equation. So that creates, in some cases, an anomaly that has to be dealt with and in many cases at a later date, because you can see the observation, you can see the, the effect, but you have no way to translate it into a particular data set. And this causes a bit of an issue in terms of you can't really present the information because there's no way to present it in terms of a data set, particularly if these people are all essentially data scientists and uh, they only look at data. Well, if you can't translate something into data, but it is a real effect, then well, now you have a problem. And this is what us, what's going on a lot today with these sort of the data scientists, where where you want to sort of classify them in, in, into a particular category. Well, they're doing the Da Vinci Code. 
The Da Vinci Code are a group of theorists who believe that anything that's in the physical realm, the only thing that exists or is observable, can be translated into a, a, into a numerical or mathematical equation. <coughs> but if you look at the history of this, you'll find that this is not the case. That the history does not meet up with the, the, the thought, the idea that the, the universe can be summed up in a series of equations. As a matter of fact, the, the, the equation for the universe itself is extremely problematic because uh, as you roll the equation back, it depends on the and you work try to go back to the zero point. Well, the zero point at the beginning of the universe, well, where is that? Well, that's a zero point. Well, that's in the denominator. Well, you can't have a zero in the denominator, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, <laughs> otherwise the equation becomes undefined because you don't, you can't define anything but zero. Uh. And so the equation becomes extremely problematic. So when you work on these equations, you have to put in other factors, not just the equation itself, so you have to have factors affecting the equation. And that gives you an extremely complicated data set, and this kind of was pointed out uh, with the Higgs boson in, at CERN, where they really, you listen to uh, Walter Lewin's uh, lecture on this. Uh, he was uh, the late Walter Lewin. And their equations for the Higgs boson were off by almost 50%. In other words, their prediction wasn't a prediction because they only got it like 50% like right. And that's why they that's why they missed it. They didn't, you know, they didn't switch it on. Ah, there's the Higgs boson. So they, they had a non-prediction. They couldn't predict what was going on with the Higgs boson. And yet that was the whole, the whole purpose of the experiment, of the Higgs boson experiment, was to determine that things were in the universe were determinable, that you had a so-called a sense of uh, prediction, a good sense of prediction, that you could predict things. You can bring it back to from, from the probabilistic universe to the deterministic universe. on May 3rd, now we'll put 22 hours into the day of, to the, into the third day of May. Uh, gotta get things right as I'm driving. <laughs> There's the con conventional way of May 3rd, which is the third day of May, but that's particularly if you're doing 24 hour clock, so you're 22 hours into the third day of May. It does take a bit of time to sort of wrap that around your tongue and to get that out of your from your mind to the to the mouth. Uh, and this is talking about being tongue-tied. And this is the thing: is sometimes when you're you're recording and your discussion is instant, you don't always have the correct uh, grammar 
or pronunciation of things. Sometimes things don't mess up. <laughs> and so we have another rain vlog. Let's see how things go today. Uh, I fixed up some of the configuration on the camera so that uh, we have a better setup than we did before. Coming down the road now. Oh. You guys' headlights are aimed high. So it's kind of blinding. into our discussion on data science uh, when we get on the road. And the thing is, the data science is basically what we call a theoretical science, because it's not necessarily based in reality, but rather in mathematical models. And there's a disconnect between reality and mathematical models. And this is, I would say, what this is the case was even demonstrated with concern, that the mathematical model that they had for the Higgs boson uh, didn't really occur. It was something else. And this was brought out in the lecture by the late great Walter Lewin. Who reflected on what was going on in, in a lecture and showed the mathematics and how what they thought was going to happen using path intervals to plot the curve and what actually happened. And the thing is, is as much as you think you know, uh, there's always more that you don't know. And th th this is sort of the nature of, of, of the asymptote. Uh, the asymptotic curve are about points that uh, cannot be reached. They're, they're infinitely far away no matter how close you get to it. And this is the entire fundamentals of calculus. The entire fundamentals of calculus is based on asymptotic mathematics. The approximation, not on... Not on, we'll call, deterministics. Deterministics, deterministics says that you can achieve a particular goal, a particular function, Absolutely. That's the term. That's the term is mathematics. It's finite. The problem is calculus isn't finite. It's infinite because it works on the pro the properties of an asymptote, and that's the entire fundamentals. That's the entire. Those are the, that's the entire fundamentals of calculus. It's the asymptotic curve. So you can't use calculus, which is a mathematics of indeterminate, of approximation, to come up with a, with a to come up with a mathematical model or a proof for something that is finite. You can get an approximation of reality, but you cannot achieve reality itself. And this is this is the nature of calculus. And so what happens? Well, a lot of these mathematical models that you're seeing now, these predictions, these projections. Are, f are basically a fundamental violation of calculus. So it's not an issue of, oh, conspiracy theory. We're talking about the nature of mathematics, the nature of calculus itself. And then these, these formulas, these, these sort of equations that do the predicting models, no matter how advanced they are, will only be approximations. And so, the things that people are calling science 
in the media isn't. But they are as approximations. And the fact that they're calling it science is, well, I would can say, I would say extremely problematic because they're, they're making statements that aren't true. They're creating what I call a science, well, a science fiction. It's a, it's a fiction that is science based. So, and the thing is, doctors are picking this up and making their diagnoses on this bad information that that's not science. So they say, oh yeah, science tells us. Well, science tells us nothing. Science only gives us an approximation. Anyone that says that science does this or does that is talking about a religion. It's the religion of science. And that's their faith in the religion of science. It's a little slick out, so I'm not going as fast as I could be going due to the slickness of the roads. It seems to be worse going north than it was going south during the day. So I'm taking my time. And I'm only, do, I'm only doing like 30, 35 kilometers an hour. I'm doing 10 kilometers slower than I typically could go if it wasn't so slick outside. So far, so good. Now uh, the camera's still going. We had to pay attention there at the intersection. There's a bit of a wind. Slight uh, redirection in the lanes. So adjustments have to be made accordingly. does make a difference as well. A little tense, because I can tell the, 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 at certain speeds, at certain spots on the road, that uh, the tires aren't gripping as well as they should be gripping, but anyways. So the roads are a little slick. That's something you have to be careful for. It's not a heavy rain. It just it just seems to be cold, and uh, you don't have the traction on the road the way you typically would. Let uh, me go again. Now for some reason, my lights started working again. So, anyways. can't figure out why things don't work sometimes, but they don't. And then sometimes it's just momentary.
tunnel there that I didn't see. Uh, we'll see what happens in terms of the in terms of uh, uh, the electric the electrical system in terms of uh, getting wet. <laughs> I think that was the difference as well. I don't think the the, the rain was cooling as much on the street. When I came, and so that adds to the slickness of conditions, uh, the, the the sort of the grip, because uh, but now the puddles I'm all right. It's when the puddles appear going into the puddles, that's when the uh, issue of, uh, of, of grip comes into play. Boy, the puddles on them all right. This is going to become a factor when I turn to take, take the right turn. Uh, anyways, everybody's kind of freaked out now. It's, uh, we're, we're going into uh, a continued lockdown now. And it's really wearing, wearing on people's nerves. all the way uh, to the, my place uh, and the camera will be all right. We'll have uh, a, a rain vlog at night. 